and we are excited to introduce you to Binets, a new web series featuring cutting-edge professional interaction with a priceless stakeholder. Presiding over this session, we have two guest editors, architect Sanjay Puri of Sanjay Puri Architects Mumbai and architect Nandini Somaya Sambath of Somaya and Kalappa Consultants Mumbai. Very briefly and between two professionals. The most important period of the person's uh, professional or personal life and this is the rendering that we presented to our clients. So I chose something which is very special to uh, Chennai. As you saw, experience in the Northeast almost rising up to the clouds. It's a kind of a newer part of the company. Architect Nandini Somaya Sampath is the director of Mumbai based architectural practice Somaya and Kalappa Consultants. Perseverance, passion, and empathy define this budding architect who endorses a meticulous and dynamic approach to varied disciplines. She recognizes that research and collaboration are the backbone of the field, while her work reiterates the importance of nature, culture, heritage, and local resources. The definition of vignettes is a shard a moment, uh, a glimpse into uh, the most important period of the person's uh, professional or personal life. And I think that's what we are going to experience on this platform. Uh, it is so important that, um, that this platform be available today. So I'll just end with a quote by an Iranian-American author, Mahboud Siraji. He said, life is a random series of beautifully composed vignettes, loosely tied together by a string of characters and time. So we're very excited that India Art and Design is bringing us these beautifully composed vignettes today. Architect Anand is the founder and partner at Design Forum International Delhi. Architect, talented singer, literary enthusiast, philanthropist and Expert in real estate trends, his design approach is defined by sustainability, social inclusivity, and contextuality. His people first ideology and passion for innovation and excellence has led Design Forum International to contribute to several, several nation building ventures of India. Thank you very much, Vinita. That was a very kind introduction. And uh, let me also thank uh, India Art and Design, Savita, and uh, Lalit for uh, giving us this beautiful platform to, I think the challenge for an architect is to uh, speak less while presenting his or her work and by capturing it in three minutes, it's a tall order. Uh, I'd like to introduce this uh, new project for which we've just finished the concept and for the sake of confidenti confidentiality, I would uh, rather not share the client's name and the location. The project is yet to be announced. But we are calling it Tech Tower for the sake of uh, calling it something. It is in northeast part of uh, this country, uh, so to speak. So DFI, uh, the firm that uh, I am one of the three proud partners of, uh, is uh, very strong across retail, uh, group housings, uh, master plans, IT parks, and off late into a lot of uh, infrastructure work that we're doing. Uh, across 22 states, across uh, this beautiful country of ours, and overseas. Three partners, Gunmeet, myself, and Anos Devatiya. Coming to the project that we're here to discuss today, um, and ideation is the uh, first thing that one would discuss about the project. Uh, the client wanted, so I'll go with what the client wanted and what we wanted to do with the project. The client wanted a tech tower, uh, building for uh, technology, so to speak. Uh, but the building has to be responsible to its users. It has to be responsible to its surroundings. And eventually, every building has to say something about itself. It has to speak its own unique story, right? The user group is uh, the typical uh, working class group, Gen X, Gen Y, and Gen Z. Uh, the expectations from the user very high. They wanted workspaces, but they wanted so much more in addition to that. They wanted outdoor seating. They wanted recreational spaces, informal spaces. They wanted the nature connect. 
of course. So what we wanted was to not create a typical multi-story organization where everybody is in their individual silos of floors, but we wanted to create a connected organization in which the entire building works and behaves and acts like one and looks like one. And what better way to uh, give an ode to uh, you know, the modern lifestyle and sustainability than to walk to work. So we made that into a design philosophy right at the beginning of the project. We wanted to walk to work. And by doing that and in doing that, we wanted to create, integrate all elements required for a joyful and productive workplace. It's a co-working space. We wanted to bring in walk to work. We wanted to have connected floors. We wanted to have visually green terraces and sustainability, of course. So there is sustainability which comes by the way you attempt to design the passive sustainability, which we have, I think, been very, very successful in bringing to this design. And then there is obviously active sustainability, which comes as way of instrumentation, as way of equipments and so on. In terms of design evolution, it turned out like a regular plate, of course. Then we made it a priority that we wanted people to walk on the facade. So we added a stepping profile to the facade. We ended up splitting the two masses. We ended up putting step terraces on every floor. And finally connected terraces across the building. And we integrated walking on the building as part of our design theme and part of our design philosophy. The drop of the, of the pedestrian to the place where your workstation is, you can actually walk throughout without getting into a lift ever. And by doing two split masses, we could naturally bring on mutual shading to the project. And we could create green terraces. So we could, as you can see, these are terraces jetting out, extruded out of the building, which double up as places to walk as well as places to unwind, relax, and so to speak, chill. And therefore, we are giving the client what we are calling walk on the building, walk on the facade. Then there is the sustainability aspect of it. We are doing sun tracking louvers. We are doing solar panel. We are doing solar efficient glass, of course. And uh, very, very briefly on the plan, um, we are doing a central core. It's an approximately uh, 3,000 square meters of a plate. It's a central core, which allows you 360 degree views. And we are doing shifting terraces anti-clockwise shifting terraces as one goes from the lower floors all the way to the upper floors. And this is what we end up doing. Uh, it's a building in which you could walk right from the entry into a staircase which is running on the facade. You could keep going, turn around the building, go to your place. So it's a four meter terrace that we have managed to take out of the building, which is split into two meters for staircases and little more than two meters for open air terraces, doubling up a seating as well as recreational zones. And uh, the masses seem to be coming out well, very beautiful and very, um, you know, self forming. It is designed to be either a Griha 5 star or a lead gold building, depending on which way we eventually go. Uh, but the intent is to go Griha 5 star at the moment. There's a canopy on the top, which caters for gatherings, which caters for uh, spillover activities of the building. And uh, this is it. It's the overall snapshot of the building when it is going to be ready. Uh, a cross long shot, as you can see, and the walk on the facade philosophy here sort of gets very, very amply demonstrated, I would say. And uh, thank you. I think you mentioned it's in the Northeast. I felt as if you're building, as you so experience in the Northeast, almost rising up to the clouds. 
and it and that break in the facade just makes it almost floating i think uh, the northeast is one of the most beautiful parts of india and to see that evolution in the facade was very exciting i think also in these challenging times of covid to bring people out is so important to have this connection constantly with the outside so i'd love to know your view just on the connection with the northeast and also the importance now as we design to make sure we have these breakout spaces for people consistently so i think i do have some sort of a karmic connection with the northeast and uh, we're building a lot in northeast we're also doing the new international airport at guwahati uh, yes. that also is our design um it is it is a beautiful place um, the floating aspect is one aspect of the design that we want i wanted to talk about thank you for bringing that up um it's it's part of a 120 acre township and there will be buildings all around eventually but right now it is world world and greenery all over the views are fabulous uh, in a distance you can see the international airport and the 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 hills on one side and brahmaputra on the horizon on the other side um the intent we designed this in february the um design got frozen in march but unfortunately because of you know the pandemic uh, things have just come to fruition now uh, we hadn't thought of it as a breakout space with a we covid relief at that time but i think providence and con- coincidence call you call it what you will but yes um, being able to not mingle with anybody if you wanted to go to eighth floor just being able to walk all on the facade of the building i think um, will be a great a great thing to do in these times where you don't want to get into crowded places with people yeah well we're excited to see it come up and we look forward uh, to seeing it completed and and i think another landmark project for the northeast so congratulations thank you so much